This is an animation that was made completely in DaVinci Resolve. It may seem like a big, complicated project to actually learn how to do and complete, but with a proper understanding of what actually happens when you animate, your point of view might change a little bit. Just remember that you aren't going to be able to go out and like, I don't know, start a whole new Pixar. Oh well, we tried. But this information that I'm about to share with you will lay the groundwork for your animation career to come. First, what is a keyframe? A keyframe is simply a marker that is attached to a variable inside a software. It's kind of like a string. You need two ends of a string, and depending on how you move it, the variable will change. Let's look at this in terms of a graph and this animation right here. The X represents the change in time, and the Y represents the change in position over that time. Our string, the actual change of that variable, is manipulated to give a unique action to this animated square. Adding more keyframes to different variables will determine the final result of this animation. Now, let's look at things a little closer in Fusion. All right guys, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna be teaching you how to make this animation right here. And it's a little bit different than the one you saw in the beginning, but it follows the same principles of animation and using keyframes. So what we're gonna do is we're first gonna go into Fusion. We're gonna press Shift Space and add a background node, BG. Press Enter. And that will create a node. We have to attach it, press the gray box, and drag it on top of the media out node. That will make a black background. Now what we need to do is we need to choose our color for this animation. So we can go up to the top right hand corner, click the inspector, make sure you clicked on the background node. Then we go down to background, click color, and we can choose our color. The next thing we need to do is we need to limit it so that way this background is condensed into a square that we can animate. So we need to find something that we can limit this background to. We call nodes that limit other nodes masks. And you might have heard rotoscoping as another word. That would be another word for masking. So what we're basically going to do is we're going to rotoscope this background node into a square so we can animate that square. We can go up to this bar here and click on rectangle and immediately if we click on this rectangle we can see this green outline and this is what the rectangle looks like but we don't want a rectangle shape we want a square shape so we can go over to the right side click on the rectangle go to the inspector again and then we can go down to width type in 0.3 and that will make the shape a little bit more like a square adjust the corner radius a little bit to round it out. Then, once we are ready with our shape, click the gray box on the rectangle and drag it over the blue arrow on the background node. And there we have it, we have limited this background node to this rectangle shape. By the way, if you guys are getting a lot of value out of this video, be sure to smash that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. Let's get back to the tutorial. Now we need a node that we can adjust the size of both the rectangle and the background node. And this is called a transform node. So what we need to do is press shift space, press XF for transform, and that will create a transform node right on this background node. If the transform node does not appear after the background node or it does not appear on this track at all, say it is detached, click it, hold it, press shift, and drag it over the line until the line becomes blue and yellow. Then you can let go and it will be attached. We need the transform node following the rectangle and the background node. Click on the transform node and this is the node that we are going to use for our animation. We can adjust the size to whatever size we would like. I don't want it too big. We are not going to be adding a keyframe for the size variable, but we will be adding a keyframe to the angle, which is how it spins, as you saw in the animation. And we will be adjusting the Y position of this shape. So at frame zero, we want the Y position to be out of frame. So what we need to do is move the Y all the way down out of frame, then click the keyframe node. After that, we need to choose a time where we want the Y animation to stop. So if we press space, we can see the little red line go. I want the animation to stop right about there. So I'm going to move it until it's in frame, or I can just press 0.5 and that will automatically add a keyframe there. If that does not happen, you can simply add a keyframe beforehand and then adjust it. Now, if we go back to frame zero, we can watch our animation go. Make sure you are in the transform node at all times for creating this animation. If we look at this little timeline here, we can see where our keyframe has been placed, which is around frame 35. And we can add another keyframe for a different variable on the same frame. So if we go over to angle and we press the key, 
keyframe. The keyframe simply means that at this frame, this is what the variable is going to be, and then it will distribute that variable between two keyframes. So if we put the next keyframe at frame zero, we can adjust it how we would like to spin onto the screen, and I think that will be good. So right now we have a pretty decent animation going, and this is a great base to what we're going to be doing next, which is adding splines. This basically adjusts the linear curve into an exponential curve, or really however we want this animation to look like. This will refine our animation a little bit and make it look more legit. So we need to go up to the right hand corner, a few tabs over from the inspector to the spline panel. We can close out the inspector and we can make this a little bit taller so we can see our nodes in the left hand side. And right now, here we have a graph. We can see all these little numbers on the side. We can adjust the size of those if we wanted to. Right now, there's nothing there. And that's because we haven't selected these checkboxes off to the side. In order to adjust the linear curve of the Y variable, we can go to displacement and check that box. And that will make this linear graph appear. If we want to adjust the color of this displacement graph, click this little pink dot here and choose a different color. If I wanted to have the same color as that, I could do that if I wanted to. For navigating around the spline panel, if you press command and you scroll on your wheel, you can zoom in and out to wherever your mouse pointer is pointing. So in order to actually manipulate this graph, we need to click on one of these keyframes. See, this is a keyframe here, and this is also a keyframe. This is kind of like the string example that I showed at the beginning of this video. Now we can manipulate our string to have a little bit different of an animation. Simply click on the keyframe, grab the handle, and adjust the curve to your liking. And really just play around with this as much as you feel like you need to. Now for adjusting the angle, if you want to view your spline transformation but you don't want to actually like accidentally bump something or mess with it or anything like that, we can simply uncheck this check mark so we can still see the animation but we can't actually mess with it. Now we can go down to angle and check that box and and we can actually adjust the angle properties to how we would like them. So after you feel like you've gotten a pretty good animation, the next step would just be to throw it into your project and really just have a lot of fun with this, guys. And I hope I helped you guys out a lot with figuring out how to actually animate one of your first projects, possibly. Like and subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next one. Quick question for you guys. Would you buy an online DaVinci Resolve course from me if I made one? I'm curious to hear what you guys think about that. I'll see you guys in the next video.